Hello people, welcome back. In this video we're going to take a look at a project I uh, finished recently called Basic CPU. It's a register-based virtual machine written in C. Uh, if you remember a while back I actually created a stack-based virtual machine in C++ as well as an assembler for it. Uh, this uh, That project was a very minimal project that, that showed the basic uh, operations of a CPU. This one is a little bit more fully featured and it's written in C. So let's take a look at some of the files here. Uh, the first file we're going to look at is the example to see how we actually use this program. So let's look at the example.c and the libraries that we need to run this are standardio.h, standardlib.h, and then cpu.h. And once you have those included, you can write your own uh, CPU application. Uh, these first few functions are just functions that I wrote to kind of look at the inside of the CPU and what's going on. So we can print out a list, uh, which is just the memory of our CPU. We can print out our registers, um, our integer registers of our CPU, and we can also print out our floating point registers. Uh, in main, this is our actual program. And for our example program, we're just going to calculate the factorial of 5. And so what we did here is this B is actually our memory, and it's all 64-bit unsigned integers. So our memory is just a series of bytes. And the bytes that we give it are these. So each one of these things separated by a comma is a 64-bit uh, uh, field. And I've organized them in such a way that they look like um, they look like assembly language. So we'll come back to this in a second. Uh, what we're going to do is after we have created our instructions, we're going to print them out. We're going to create a CPU and uh, we're going to add our memory to our CPU and give our memory length, which happens to be 18 in this case. Then we can run our CPU, uh, print out our registers, our uh, integer registers and then our floating point registers then we can free the memory uh, of our CPU and end our program. So let's go back up here and take a look at how our program works. LII is load uh, immediate integer and so we're gonna load a 1 into register 0, we're gonna load a 5 into register 1 and load a 1 into register 2. And what we're gonna do now <coughs> is multiply uh, register 1 and 0. And so what we'll have is we'll have 5 times 1 and we're going to store that uh, the way that the kind of the assembly language works or the way that the machine language works here is that the first uh, argument is always the uh, destination and the second one is the source. So 1 gets loaded into 0, into register 0, and 5 gets loaded into register 1. You can think of this as kind of being an equal sign, right? So uh, things work in that direction. So they always go from the source to the destination, which is on the left. So when we multiply, we're going to multiply register 1 and register 0, and we're going to store that answer in register 0. Uh, then we're going to subtract uh, register 2 uh, from register 1. And register 2 has 1 in it, and register 1 has 5 in it. So 5 is going to become 4. Then we're going to come down to this jump instruction. And if uh, our jump, uh, if our arithmetic that we just completed does not equal 0, then we're going to jump to instruction 8. And so if we think about this, we're going to start at instruction 0. So 0, 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then what our CPU does is it fetches the next instruction. So once this jump instruction is completed, it's going to fetch the next one. And it's going to go here and execute this instruction. So that's why we jump to instruction 8. We jump to the instruction before we want to, uh, the one that we want to execute. And then 
uh, we're going to keep doing this over and over. So we're going to multiply 1 and 2, which is going to be uh, register 1 and 2, uh, which is going to be 4 and 5, which is going to make 20. And then we're going to subtract uh, 1 from, from register 1, which is going to become 3. And so we're going to multiply 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. And that will give us the factorial of 5. Once it does equal 0, we're going to break out of our loop and we're going to halt the machine. And that's how our program works. So let's let's go ahead and test or run our program. So let's use GCC standard C99 and put example in there. And now we'll have an A dot out. And if we run our A dot out, we get what we expected. So we get our instructions printed out along with our integer registers, our floating point registers, which we did not use at all. And if we look at our integer registers, we see that register 0 has 120 in it, which is what we expected as the factorial of 5. So let's take a look at the internals of how this thing actually works. So the first file we're going to look at is our types.h. And types.h defines the types that we're going to be using. So instead of having to say unsigned uh, lawn and lawn and double everywhere, we're going to have uh, u64, i64, and f64. I don't use byte yet, but that will probably happen in the future as I expand the virtual machine. We also I also created this first byte, which is essentially just a bit mask. Mm -hmm. Uh, to give us the first byte of our instruction. And it's not very useful right now, but it will be useful in the future when I expand the virtual machine. The next thing that comes is an enumeration of our registers. And so you can see here that we have eight registers, eight integer registers, and eight floating point registers. And uh, there's a little trick for enumerations. Uh, enumerations automatically get numbered. If uh, you put a little enumeration here, you'll actually have the number of registers that you have in, our, uh, in your enumeration. So next comes the struct for our CPU. And so we're going to create uh, a pointer to our memory that we're going to feed. Uh, we're going to have the max size of our memory. And then we have a series of registers that are available to us. So we have our program counter, our stack pointer, we've got our eight integer registers, we've got our eight floating point registers, and then we've got um, our instruction parts. Uh, it turns out that only the instruction is used right now. Uh, the destination source actually aren't used at the moment, uh, but they'll be used in the future, uh, possibly. Uh, we've got some buses for communication, but we can't communicate right now. We just have a CPU, so these aren't used. And we also have some flags, uh, some 0, less than 0, and greater than 0. And so every time a mathematical operation occurs in our CPU, uh, these flags get set. So if we do, say, a subtraction or multiplication or something like that, and the answer happens to be 0, then this zero flag will actually get set. Uh, if it's less than zero, the, the LTZ flag will get set, and the GTZ zero, uh, flag will get set if the answer is greater than zero. So this allows us to actually perform some logical operations uh, from our math. And that's it for our types that we've declared. The next thing we're going to look at is our instructions. So the instructions is a very short file, and it's an enumeration of all of our instructions that we can do. And we can clear our flags, we can move integers and floating points, and this, uh, these move operators only work on registers. So we can move information from one register to another. We've got store integer, store float, and load integer and load float, and these allow us to move information to and from registers and memory or move information between memory and registers. So store uh, moves uh, information from a register to memory, and load moves information from memory to a register. Uh, we have uh, LII, which we've seen a lot so far, which is load immediate integer, and we've got load immediate float, which allows us to load a, an immediate value right into a register. 
We have push and pop, which uh, pushes and pops information from a stack uh, into, uh, into actually from a register into the stack and off of the stack into a register. Uh, we have floating point versions of those and we have integer and floating point versions of add, subtract, multiply, and divide, which we've already seen. We have jump functions, which allow us to jump if uh, the result of a comparison or the result of a mathematical operation is less than zero, greater than zero, equal to zero, uh, not zero, and then we can have an unconditional jump where we can jump to a place in memory. We can shift uh, on our integer registers. We can actually shift left and right. Um, we can also have uh, binary operations, so we can have a bitwise and, or, not, and zor, and we have a logical and, or, and not, uh, and a halt instruction, and then the number of our instructions. And so that's all of our instructions that are available to us in the CPU right now. So let's go and take a look at our flags. So the flags are just some functions to set our flags. So we can clear our flags and set them to zero. We can set flags. Uh, we actually have two versions of setting the flags, uh, one for integer operations and one for floating point operations down here. And basically every time a mathematical operation happens, this set flags function is called and we're given a pointer to the CPU as well as the, as well as the result of the computation and based on that result the flags are set. So that's very easy and then what we're going to look at now is the meat of the system which is CPU.h. Uh, CPU.h uh, includes our types, instructions, and flags and the CPU uh, uh, the CPU.h file includes everything that, that the CPU needs to run. So we've got things like um, actually, this get location is not used right now, but possibly will be used in the future. Uh, but the new CPU creates a new CPU. It allocates memory for a new CPU and returns a pointer uh, to that CPU that we created. And it initializes some of these things that should be initialized, such as the memory, uh, our stack pointer, our maximum memory size, so it allows us to um, allows us to have a safe um, stack pointer, uh, which actually we don't enforce right now. Uh, we set our program counter to negative one because we fetch an instruction first, and remember when we fetch, we actually increment our instruction counter first before we get the, the instruction. And then we set an instruction to zero just to, to zero that out. Uh, we free the CPU by just calling free on our CPU, and then we have the main run function for the CPU. This is uh, kind of the heart of what happens in an actual CPU. So while our instruction does not equal halt, we fetch and we execute. Now in real CPUs, there is a, an instruction or there is an operation in between fetch and execute, which is called decode. And decode is where a fetched instruction gets decoded into different parts and then execute executes those different pieces of the instruction based on the decoding. But our CPU is so simple right now that it actually does not need a decoding. We can actually execute uh, the instructions that we fetch directly. So right now we have fetch and execute. And this just happens in a loop forever until we get a halt instruction or perhaps if the CPU crashes. So our fetch instruction is very simple. The fetch instruction uh, increments our program counter and then sets the instruction uh, to where our program counter is pointing to a place in memory. And then we, uh, we do a bitwise AND with a first byte mask because our instruction is only going to be the first byte of this 64-bit value. So we're only going to have a possibility of 256 instructions in this uh, CPU. Uh, the other seven bytes are going to be left for the future. Uh, our execute function is going to be the largest function and 
essentially this is a kind of uh, dispatch. Whoops, let's actually go down here. Uh, this is going to dispatch our instructions. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to switch. If you look up here at the top, we're going to switch on our instruction. And based on the enumeration of our instruction, that's what we're going to execute. So if, for example, our instruction is clear flags, then we're going to clear the flags. And that will be the execution of the instruction. Uh, one of the other ones, uh, perhaps we have a move instruction where we're going to move uh, something from one register to another register. That's what this line does. And then we actually increment our program counters because our registers are actually um, uh, the information to store uh, to move information from one register to another is stored in our program memory and so we're gonna increment through that and so that's essentially what all of this does so all of the instructions are, are essentially doing uh, moving stuff around in memory doing mathematics uh, doing jumps and that's uh, the implementation of our CPU. So it really is quite simple. Um, in fact, this whole implementation is, as it stands right now, only less than 250 lines of code, of C code. So I'm going to add probably some uh, some more floating point operations in there, probably trigonometric functions and things like that. But this, that is the essentials of having a virtual uh, CPU. Uh, thank you for watching. Till next time.